Hello, I'm Ron Pixa, International Vice President and President of the Pacific Northwest District Council. Please join me in supporting North American manufacturers and steel fabricators. They have the first class facilities, skills, trained manpower, and the competitive pricing to rebuild the crumbling U.S. infrastructure. However, short-sighted contracting decisions threaten our own economic recovery and compromise jobs here at home. In this video, you will see examples of how our infrastructure dollars are being misused to create jobs and wealth overseas. Let's work together to ensure that our tax dollars are invested here at home to create the jobs and economic opportunity that support America. Thank you. 3,000 workers are employed fabricating the new Oakland Bay Bridge. In 2002, hundreds were employed to fabricate 35 million pounds of steel for the new Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Big projects, but the jobs and profits didn't go to U.S. and Canadian companies. It's our jobs and contracts for local companies being sent offshore. This is often met with, I'm sorry about your job, it's happening to a lot of people. But sympathy doesn't put anyone to work. The decision to buy steel produced and fabricated in China for an Alaska rail bridge funded by the Department of Defense reached a tipping point last year. The Alaskan iron workers wanted to fight back and take this issue to the people. What followed was a radio commercial telling Alaska it was their tax dollars being exported, robbing its workers of badly needed jobs by handing them over to a foreign country. This is not the time to send more jobs to China. So why is Alaska Railroad and its contractor ordering the steel and fabricating the new Tanana River Bridge in China? Our tax dollars will provide hundreds of jobs there, not at home. Contact the governor's office and your congressional and state representatives. Ask them to tell Alaska Railroad to hire American workers. A message from Alaska Iron Workers, proudly standing up for all American workers. The two-week radio campaign created a firestorm reaction, with Alaskans calling the governor and the state legislature. This effort went national in ABC's featured news segment, Made in America, which incorporated Alaska's campaign. It was later picked up in another NBC cable news show. And as you know, ABC News is always looking for ways to bring American jobs back to America. So this week, it was shocking to learn so many great infrastructure projects are underway in America, rebuilding bridges and roads in American cities, but they've hired Chinese firms and Chinese workers. Why? 2020 anchor Chris Cuomo is the captain of our Bringing America Back team, and he decided to track down those people who made these decisions. Rebuilding America's crumbling infrastructure is now a priority. Help us rebuild this bridge. Help us rebuild America. Help us put construction workers back to work. In New York, a $400 million renovation of the Alexander Hamilton Bridge. In California, a whopper, a $7.2 billion new bridge to connect San Francisco and Oakland. And in Alaska, a proposed $190 million bridge project. Sounds like a great opportunity for government spending to actually lead to real jobs. The problem? Much of the work is going to Chinese government-owned contracting firms. When we're subsidizing jobs in China, uh, we're not creating any wealth in the United States. In Alaska, outraged union workers took to the airwaves with an obvious point. This is not the time to send more jobs to China. Our tax dollars will provide hundreds of jobs there, not at home. U.S. law actually requires major infrastructure projects to buy America when the cost difference is reasonable. In California, U.S. firms say they would have met those guidelines, but state officials decided to turn down federal money for a major part of the bridge, allowing a Chinese company to get the job, at a cost of almost 3,000 American jobs and a potential $1 billion boost to the struggling California economy. It would have had a multiplier effect because it would have not only given uh, thousands of Californians jobs, but also the subsequent spending would have been reinvested back in our economy. Is this the best way to bring America back? We went to California officials who claim the Chinese could do the work faster and cheaper. Why can't the Americans do it as quickly as the Chinese? What makes them so special? One issue that you will consistently hear every time you go to a fabrication site in this country 
is that they struggle at this point in time to obtain welders. That is an issue in this country. So can you say that you guys have done everything you can to keep jobs here in building this bridge? Absolutely. But would American companies have done it, Chris, for a little less money and tried to race it along? The U.S. firms say absolutely. They say they could have done this job. And there's a bigger point here. It's not a level playing field. The Chinese firms are state-owned. They don't pay their workers as much. That's why the Buy America laws were passed. If states can get around them, Diane, we'll never bring America back. You have to enforce the rules to let American companies play. Manufacturing jobs in America. As you surely know, we saw stagnant growth in the jobs market on Friday with only a net gain of 2,000 manufacturing jobs last month. That does nothing to offset the millions lost since the 1980s. And the big reason really is China. The, of the nearly 3 million U.S. jobs that we've sent to China uh, during the past decade, more than two-thirds of those jobs, or nearly two million, were manufacturing jobs. That a direct result of American and Chinese government policy, specifically tax and currency policy. Even more disturbing, our tax dollars, yours and mine, are being used to buy cheap goods from China to hire Chinese workers in industry. Here's a prime example. The $6 billion project in California to rebuild part of the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge, which is California's largest public works project ever. Uh, and thanks to Washington loopholes, it helped to create 3,000 jobs in China, buying Chinese steel for a really an American icon jobs that surely uh, could have been and, by my view, should have been created here at home. I'm not the only one who thinks that way. As you know, Congressman Nick Rahal is the top Democrat on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. His new bill would close those loopholes polls and make sure that bridges and other infrastructure projects financed by my tax dollars and yours are stamped made in America, not made in China. And uh, Congressman, how does the bill work? Well, what you've described, Dylan, is just incredulously outrageous. It's appalling. It's downright wrong. And uh, when you see American tax dollars going to put Chinese to work, some 3,000 on this particular project, uh, you, you just cannot comprehend what's happening here. The news coverage was outstanding, but the message must be taken to our elected officials who need our encouragement to actually do something. The Alaska Rail Bridge decision has become all too common throughout the United States. Fabrication projects are coming from across the ocean, while American businesses and highly skilled American iron workers are sitting idle. It's time to step forward by urging congressional action educating local political leaders and elevating the issue when it occurs in your state.